Hi everybody, welcome to today's live tutorial. Today we have in studio our beautiful model, Tracy. Thank you for being here with yeah, us. No problem. So happy to have you. So today we are going to be doing a very glowy romantic look and we're gonna be using, incorporating some rose tones and some cocoa tones. It's gonna be fun. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So we're gonna start um, by doing a little bit of cream bronzer on Tracy. So I'm gonna use my Graftobium palette. And I just like these two darker tones in here are really great for contour on most skin tones. So I just like to mix those together on a little palette. And we actually, we did a before of Tracy. So we can go ahead and flash that for you guys before we did her brows and her foundation. So I've already done um, her foundation. I've already done a little bit of highlighting and then brows, obviously. So I just like to replicate um, the natural light, like the natural, what the natural light would play up on your face with highlights and shadows. So I like to highlight the areas that are forward and anything I want to recede a little bit, I'm going to do this contour. Cream contours take a little bit more time than powders, but they're super natural, so they're really fun. And Tracy has great bone structure. It's very fun to do your makeup, Tracy. <laughs> Do you like to play around and try different things? Yeah. Yeah. What do you like to do? Um, I just really like to like try out like eyeshadow and stuff. You have good eyes for it. You have like a perfect lid space. It's probably fun to try it. Do you like doing a wing and like fun colors and yeah. stuff like that? I love it. And Tracy wants to go to cosmetology school. So you're probably all about the makeup and the, she dyes her own hair. This is hair by Tracy and it looks <laughs> so good. Red is hard. Red is hard to do. What line do you use? Uh, I have no idea. No, I, mean, <laughs> I just, I like messing with the dyes. Okay, like you'll mix a couple yeah. things. I love it. And you already style hair for like your yeah. sisters and friends. You're going to get in cosmetology school and be like the busiest one. Everyone's already going to trust you <laughs> and want to come to you. Okay, so before we get into eyes, I'm just gonna set her face really quick. Um, Tracy said she gets just a little bit oily, right? Mm -hmm. Like a little bit shiny. Yeah. Probably around the T-zone, like your nose and stuff, forehead area. So we're just gonna set that with powder. But because I want this look to be glowy, I'm just gonna um, be minimal with my setting. So I like to use a more dense brush for these areas that will get probably more oily, like around the nose and the chin. We're gonna set a little bit under the eye. Go ahead and look up for me. Good. And when you set, when you've already applied the foundation and the creams and the contours, you do not want to rub with your brush. You wanna do patting motions. Otherwise, you're gonna disrupt the barrier of everything you've applied and it's gonna look patchy. But if you do little pats, it'll stay looking perfect. Tracy, you have the best skin. You're like in real life airbrushed. I love it. So what? what's your favorite makeup brand? Um, I really like uh, what the Tarte or however you pronounce it. Oh yeah, so. Tarte? Yeah, Tarte. Tarte is so good. I love their concealers. Yeah. They're good. Have you used their eyeshadows? No. I haven't either. We're gonna use, um, this is Hoola Bronzer. This is by Benefit, it's super good. I love this when I contour. So we're gonna actually set her contour with this. Just in the cheekbones. The forehead. I love, um, I love the tones in Tracy's hair. So I, that's kind of what inspired the makeup colors we're gonna be doing today. So I really love the Too Faced Born This Way Natural Nudes palette. They have a lot of kind of rose tones, cocoa tones, stuff like that. And I feel like they'll play really well with Tracy's hair color. Well, it's still looking pretty natural. Okay, so now that that is set with my matte powders, we're gonna go ahead and add some glow. So we're, we are gonna go back into, this is the Hourglass palette. So I'm gonna start by doing the bronze has a bronzer and it's really reflective. It's very glowy. So I'm gonna go over everything that has been bronzed with that. Since Tracy has such a good skin texture, we can pretty much 
do glow everywhere. We don't have to worry about enhancing texture or anything like that. So we're going to go for it. What kind of hairstyles do you like doing, Tracy, on people um, when you're playing around? I really like like um, French braiding or something. Ooh, that's yeah. fun. So you like the braids? Mm -hmm. That can be hard. Do you like the really intricate stuff? Um, I haven't tried that, no. That's so fun. You Are you just everyone's favorite best friend? Like they're <laughs> like, Tracy, please do my hair, please do my makeup. I was like that in college because I worked at a salon and all my roommates were like, Julie, will you get me ready for my date? Will you do my makeup? It's fun though. Yeah. It's fun to be everyone's best friend <laughs> with your skills. Has your mom ever had you color her hair? No. Or your sister's? Not yet. <laughs> her mom's here. She's in the corner. She left. <laughs> She'll be your first client in hair school. <laughs> She's still laughing. Maybe not. My cute mom. So when I went to cosmetology school, I went in Utah, and Utah is really strict with like their rules and stuff. So you had to go for 2,000 hours. So it was a year full-time, 40 hours a week. And then for your state boards, the haircut you had you do was like the worst. It was, I'm not lying, a mullet. Like the top layers were like this long and the base had to be this long. And to, to grade you when you were done, they pulled it out from the head and everything had to be between four and six inches. So there's no way around it. You had to cut a mullet and it had to be in a real person. It could not be a model. So the hardest part about getting your cosmetology license was not in fact any of the skill set. It was finding someone who's like, I love you enough to get a mullet. So for wow. me, it was my mom and she loved it thank goodness she loved the 80s she's like this is great i have so much volume I'm like okay mom i promise i'll fix it after but i have to give you more it was the worst but now they have changed it and you can do um you can do a mannequin and i'm so mad i'm like i had to find a real model i feel like all generations should have to find somebody to, to give them a lot to. And honestly, it might even be a different haircut now. I don't. It was called the 90 degree haircut. It was the worst. <laughs> I'm very traumatized. <laughs> but I don't think that will happen to you. So that's good. But moral of the story is, I don't know. I'm glad you won't have to do that. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna put these, these are called shadow shields. I just started using them either this week or last. I love them so much. So they're great to put on after you already do your face. This is a nude palette, but what I really like is that every shadow has some fun undertones with a bit of a pop. It's not neutral. Um, so I really like this cocoa color. I like some of the rose tones and I like the warmer brown. So we're gonna be using a gradient of this on Tracy today. So we're gonna start with the shade Seashell. So this is one of the lighter colors in the palette. Go ahead and close. And we're just going to dust this on. And we're essentially going to use this color just to kind of contour her eye. This is a similar tone on her skin tone to the nose contour we did to the contour up here. It's very light, so it's not adding a lot of depth, but we're just going to bring it in to start sculpting out her pretty eyes. So you like doing eye looks. What's your favorite eyeshadow palette? Um, I don't really have one. What do you use the most, or do you just love to always try I just new? I like messing with different colors. So fun. Yeah. What are your favorite colors to do? Um, I like the gold one, and like, it was like, kind of like an autumn one, which is really pretty. That would be pretty on you. An autumn one, like kind of like a burgundy. Yeah. Oh, that'd be so gorgeous. It's fun when you have like colors like this in your hair because you can play it up in your eyeshadow and it looks really cool. Okay, we have some people in the chat. People are loving you already, Tracy. <laughs> Kathy says, hi, hello. Hi, Robbie. Um, okay, what cream bronzer was used? So let me pull up for you and I'll show you. It was the Graftobian palette. Um, this one, they, they sell a couple. So this one's warm palette number three, and I pretty much just use these two darkest shades. So, um, they work on light skin tones too. They're very, very warm, but with a good neutral undertone. And then I use them all the way up until like a, a deeper medium skin tone. And I mix these two, but you could even just do the darker one if you're working with deep skin tones. 
Oh, Robbie said, your model is beautiful. Yes, she is. Tracy, you're gorgeous. Um, Marjorie said, do a real dramatic look. <laughs> we could, she has the eyes for it. Oh, and hi, she said, um, she finally made it live. Welcome. We're so happy to have you. Okay, so we're going to go into her eyes. We probably won't be super, this isn't a super dramatic palette, but I definitely will do some smoking. Uh, not some smoking. <laughs> we'll smoke the outer corners of her edge. I have never smoked. Okay, so we're going to go in with that cocoa color, um, and I'm going to size down my brushes. So I'm just using a fluffy blending brush. This is called Coco, is the shade name. And we have a PNG of this palette. We can throw it up so you guys can see. So Coco's near the end. Like the whole palette, what I like about it is it's laid out in a gradient, so it goes from light to dark. So it's really helpful when you're doing shadows because they're just sort of laid out in the way you're gonna use them. So because Tracy has such a beautiful eye space, I'm bringing the shadows up fairly high. and. Towards this middle look, when I do contouring and I do a nose contour, I like to bring the shadows like up in here and almost meet the nose contour. So we're going to do that. And you can keep layering your shadows until you get them the way that you like. If you keep dipping back into the same color, it's only going to go as dark as it looks in the pan. So you don't have to be worried about layering it and layering it and layering it. It won't look muddy or anything. So do you wear do you wear makeup to school? Yeah. Do a lot of girls wear makeup to school? Yeah, a lot. Of, yeah. That's fun. Like a good amount, like fun, dramatic looks or more um, natural? It really depends on the people. That's cool. Yeah. Okay, go ahead and open for me. So I like the way that is looking. Um, I think I want on Tracy, because she, the way when her eyes are open, you see a lot of her lid. I don't want that to be too light, so I'm actually going to bring this cocoa color in a little bit more on her lid and down a little bit over there, just to give it some depth. And then we're going to do a shimmer, like a rosy shimmer on her lid as well. So you can see the difference actually before I put color in the size on these two. So initially I just like to do my initial sculpting and get into that crease and then I have people open their eyes and I'll see. So on her with all this light lid space, I felt like it wasn't as flattering if we added some depth. So I'm going to put this color to about halfway on her eye and then just bring it down over here in the crease. And we're going to do a shimmer on top. So. It's okay if we get the shadow, if we overlap it a little bit. And so far we've done all mattes. Okay, go ahead and open for me. Beautiful. All right, let's do, we're gonna do this tone. This is called Rose Gold. It's very pretty. I like the golden flecks in it. I feel like they'll play really well with her skin tone, so that is what we are gonna use. And you like it. You said you like gold tones, so it'll be pretty. Okay, so I usually like a flat brush for shimmers. I thought I already used mine and pulled it out. Okay, this one's good. Alright, so this is just a flat brush as opposed to a blending brush. I like that for my shimmers and my glitters. Go ahead and close. Just because they do a better job of pressing it and really packing it on the lid. Sometimes a blending brush or a fluffy brush will just put it on too sheer for my liking. So let's wiggle that up in there. Anything with a glitter is gonna be kind of messy, so you have to be have to be careful. This is a pretty color. So with your red hair, do you have to touch it up super often, or does it hold on to this tone pretty well? Um, it's semi-permanent, so, I mean, I personally don't really, like, want red all the time, so. You want it to fade away? Yeah. That's good. And you've never bleached it, right? You no. just put the semi-permanent yeah. on? That's awesome. It's 
pretty vibrant for no bleach underneath. Good job. Okay, so I like to bring this right up into the crease and almost make a little line. It doesn't have to be too precise. This isn't a cut crease, but I do like a little bit of definition. Go ahead and open. Gorgeous. Go ahead and close. Okay. So what I also like to do once that's on, open one more time for me. Go ahead and close. I just like to bring a little bit of this color to the inner part of the lid. If it doesn't have enough depth. Open one more time. Okay, go ahead and close. And then I'm probably just going to dust a little bit over here just so that space doesn't look so empty. Okay, open for me. Gorgeous. All right, this, I just need to do a little bit more on this side there. That one didn't grab as much. Okay, so now I'm going to smoke out. We're going to go to the darkest color in the palette. This is Truffle. So we're going to go in with a smaller blending brush in that shade. Go ahead and close, and we're just going to define this outer corner. And just wiggle that. This intensifies it. So if you wanted to do a really soft look, you could skip this. But depending on your eye shape, if you want a little bit of drama, this is a good way to do it. Then I'm just taking a larger brush and just blending it, and this brush doesn't have any product on it. Okay, we're going to pull off these shadow shields, see what we have to work with. Actually, first we'll do a little bit of powder eyeshadow for our liner. So I'm going to go, and this is the Viseart palette. Um, I'm just going to use this matte black from it because the Too Faced one didn't have a black. Go ahead and close for me, good. And I am just going to press this into her lash line. And then we're gonna go over it with a gel liner. I like to do eyeshadow first just because it makes my liner look smoky and soft. Now we'll take off the, the shadow shields. To pull at your skin. Oh, it worked good. Sometimes they'll pull up the concealer underneath. Okay, now I'm going to go in. This is a black eyeliner. This one's by Bobbi Brown. We're just going to do it. We're going to do some tight lighting. Maybe do a bit of a wing. We'll see. And if you guys have any questions now, is a good time to drop them in the chat while we do this part. Pull it up one more time. Okay, go ahead and look down for me. Perfect. I'm just going to wiggle this in between your natural lashes. Your natural lashes are so long. Oh my gosh. Do you use like a lash serum? No. You're just lucky. Good genetics. Do you wear fake lashes? No. You don't need to. Have you ever? No. No? Okay, we'll put them on you today. Today can be the day. Are you okay with wearing yeah. them? Okay. All right, go ahead and open and look this way for me. Perfect. And then kind of down at the brush. Great. I'm so excited to put them on for the <laughs> first time for you. That'll be so fun. Okay, go ahead and look this way and down. Perfect. Okay, go ahead and look forward. Great. So I love liner in the inner tear duct. I feel like it just intensifies the eyes. It's really pretty. Okay, you can actually go ahead and close. We're going to do some more liner on top. I pretty much always do liner with two brushes. I have like a fat, flat flat brush I like and then I have that little detail brush that I'll use for the inner and outer corner and if you're going to do fake lashes you already know you can do your lash line fairly thick because 
the band of the lashes that you put on is going to cover it. So if you do it too skinny, you're just going to cover it up and you can't see it. So keep that in mind. Do you like to watch hair and makeup on YouTube, Tracy? Yeah. Who's your favorite? Um, either Bretman Rock or James Charles. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and look forward. James Charles is so good at like the colored looks. He has his own palette, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have it with like all the colors? No. Okay, go ahead and close. Yeah, he's super good. Do you watch any hair people? Do you learn cool braids on YouTube? Uh, no. <laughs> Just makeup? Yeah. How'd you learn to color hair? Um, I, I didn't really. You didn't? You just would <laughs> play around? Yeah. That can be risky. <laughs> I'm glad it was good for you. Okay, go ahead and open. Perfect. Go ahead and close. With her eye shape, I actually want this line of liner to be pretty thick, so and just keep going over it. And this is my little precise brush, so this is good for thickening up the top of the line if I want to do it in like small increments. If your brush is too fat and you try to just add like a little bit thicker of a line, sometimes it backfires and it is really, really thick. So I like this brush. Okay, open. Good. Close. Open. Good. Okay. I'm just going to clean it up with a little Q-tip. So I like to do um, the lashes and then let those dry and then we'll go in and do lips and then we'll come back to the eye and do some like detailed finishing work. Okay, Robbie said, it looks like you only put the dark shadow on the sides and then, oops, and then used a larger blender to sweep the color in the crease. Is that right? It looks lo lovely. Yes, that is exactly right. So I only put the darkest shadow on the bottom near her lash line and then the big fluffy brush I used to blend it was the one that I had done that initial lighter color up in here. So I didn't apply more color, I just blended it. So you are exactly right. That is what I did. Okay, before I do the lashes, I like to curl the natural ones. So I'm just gonna have you look forward. This is totally weird. Does that pinch? No. Okay. If you've never, have you curled your lashes? Yeah. Okay. Does that pinch at all? No. Have you had somebody else curl them? No. I it's don't. very weird. <laughs> Sorry. You're doing great. Okay. Let's choose. Let's choose a lash for you. Let's see what I have. I may not have, I kind of want to do a dramatic lash on you. Let's, um, let's flip the camera, Kelly, to the main camera on Tracy, and I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab my book of lashes. Okay, this is my lash book. We got all the goods. So I want to do one, I feel like you can pull off something a little bit thicker. Let's do... Let's do these. Yes, let's see how they look. I love lashes, if you cannot tell. <laughs> and we are live. If you are new to my channel, we live stream tutorials every week, most weekdays. Okay, go ahead and open. Those are so pretty. Okay. You're going to be so glam, Tracy, when you leave me. You'll have to go somewhere fun. <laughs> what will your siblings say? Um, honestly, 
I don't know. I mean, they're probably used to it though. Like if you play around with your makeup, like oh, Tracy looks great as usual. Okay, open for me. Oh, so pretty. I don't know. I'll hold these lashes up so you guys can see. I actually don't remember. I have it written down, but I don't have it memorized which one these are. So they're just like a thicker lash. Like they have a really thick band, but they're very wispy at the edges, which I love. And then we're going to use a black glue today. This is, well, this one's Duo. When I want the lash line to be really dark, I do a black glue. But you have to be careful when you apply it. So these lashes are reusable. So when you wash your face tonight, you can keep the lashes and like let them dry. Mm -hmm. And you, you're supposed to be able to use them up to 20 times, these ones, but it's up to you. It depends on how you take care of them, but you can reuse them. Just let that dry. So I trimmed, usually you have to trim the lashes. I always trim from the outside corner and we, um, we only had to trim a little bit, just one of the little, I usually just count the little clusters and we'll trim like one to four of them off. We only had to trim off one for her. And you want to make sure your glue is nice and tacky. If you put it on and the glue's too wet, they, it'll be a mess will not work for you. <laughs> Go ahead and look down, but don't close. Good. So when I put them on, I like to come from above instead of going up like this because they're just more flattering that way. The lashes face upward. So I like to nestle them right up against the lash line. And then once they're on, I'll, I'll push them up. Give them a little lift, a little lash lift. And you just have to babysit the inner and outer corner because they're gonna wanna be naughty and they're gonna wanna pop off. So you have to watch them. Okay. So when I take the lashes off of the, out of their little package, I always grab them from the outside corner because sometimes they'll tear and if the outside corner tears that's okay because I'm probably gonna trim it so oh I grabbed it so this is okay so we'll let that dry for a bit. I'm surprised you've never tried lashes. How come you've never tried that? Um, I don't know. I'm just scared to put them on. <laughs> <laughs> You're scared to put them on? Yeah. It's hard. It could go wrong, and it probably will. If you ever try them your first time, you'll be like, this is so hard. I hate it. <laughs> but then the second time, it's like riding a bike. It's like the worst your first time, and then it's fine. Then you figure it out. You'd pro you'll probably be one of those people that's like naturally good at it because you're already good at makeup and hair. You'll just figure it out. Okay, look down, but don't close. So the reason I have you not close is so your eyes don't get stuck together. Because when you close, you can blink if you need to blink. But um, like if you ever do these lashes on somebody else, you don't have them closed because the glue, when they squeeze their eyes, will kind of migrate down to the bottom and it'll get stuck. So mm -hmm. that's why... Okay, look forward. So you can see when I push them up like that, they just, it gives them a lift. There's nothing, the lashes do nothing for the eyes if they're just hanging forward or hanging down, like nothing. Like they don't enhance anything, but when they're curled up and they have a little bit of lift, go ahead and look down. That's what makes the eyes look so pretty. So if you're not gonna curl the lashes or put them on correctly, there's no point of the lashes. Gorgeous. Okay. I like to curl the lashes. I like to add a little bit of mascara, but they need to be completely dry. So we're going to go on ahead and move to the lips and we're going to add a little bit more highlighter. So we're going to do, let's do highlighter with like a bit of a gold tone for you. 
This is the Anastasia Glow Kit. Okay, let's do Moonstone has a little bit of gold. Let me see. Actually, that one might be too light. I like the Anastasia highlighters. Okay, this one's the Nicole Guerrero kit. So this one is pretty. This has like the blush pinky tones and then they have the goldeny peachy tones. So this is perfect. I love highlighters and I love to incorporate whatever tones I do in the makeup in the highlighter because all highlighters will have a bit of an undertone. Usually like a champagne or a slight gold is a very natural highlight and will look good with all makeup, but it's kind of fun to do colored ones and you can play up the tones in your makeup. These are super reflective. Like you can tell when I turn her, like all the lights in here, these are very glow. If you like glow, the Anastasia glow kits are very glowy. They're very pretty. Okay, let's do, let's do a little bit of a nose highlight. Just like to use a teeny, teeny little brush. Just draw a glow exclamation point. You wanna be careful with the nose highlight. I see a lot of people do it and they'll put it on with their finger, which is fine. But if you, if you dab it on and get it really fat and really wide, it doesn't really do anything for the nose. You want it to be really skinny, your little nose highlight. And I love to highlight the inner corner of the eye. I think it's so, so pretty. Do you do fun makeup for Halloween? Oh, yeah. What were you last year? Um, a cat. Cute. Yeah. And you did, like, the cat makeup and mm -hmm. everything. Do you know what you're going to be this year? Uh, no. It's very far away. Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame you for not knowing. Some people plan way in advance. What were you the year before? Um, oh, actually, I was a clown this year, last year, and then a cat the year before. Okay. Yeah. Cute. What did you do when you were a clown? Um, I kind of did like an it kind of thing. Oh, so you were a creepy clown. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Do you like scary movies? Yeah. You do? What's, did you watch it? No. <laughs> that looked so scary. I'm a wuss. I don't watch any scary movies. <laughs> What's your favorite? Um, I don't know. Can you coat your lashes? On my channel, I think it was last year or two years ago for Halloween, we did ghost stories and glam, and I had somebody come, and I did their glam. We did, like, a Halloween glam, and they told ghost stories because we had somebody come who, like, their house is haunted, and they told me about it. It was very creepy, but very fun. <laughs> Okay, we're going to go under the eyes a little bit. So I'm going to do two different things. I'm going to go in with this um, cocoa color. Go ahead and look up for me. We're just going to dust this under the eyes, smoke it out a little bit. And then we're going to go in with a little shimmer. So this cocoa color, this was like the mid-tone that we did. So we basically did this one, this one, and this one. So this is just the mid-tone. Okay, and then I'm going to flip this little guy around, and we're going to go in with that rose gold glitter we did on top. Look up for me. I'm just going to pop it right in the center. It's kind of like a little halo effect, and it's just going to make her eyes look really glowy, really bright. And then I'm going to take my um my eyeliner brush and have you look up tracy and i'm just going to tap right into your lash line so just we're going to tap this dark brown in between all your little lashes just add a nice little shadow there Go ahead and look forward. Gorgeous. Okay. Um, now I'm going to ask mascara and then we'll do the lips.
and this is this is just a CoverGirl mascara. This is the Lash Blast. It's really good for volume. It's like a mega plumper for the lashes. So we're gonna do this. I'm gonna have you look down about right there. Yeah. So I just like to wiggle the natural lashes right into the um, false lashes just to press them together because otherwise you kind of get this weird separation especially if your lashes are really long like Tracy's you can almost see like if you looked at her from the side you would see her natural little lashes and then you would see like the fake lashes so I want them to go together as one sometimes I'll put mascara on the tips of the fake lashes like up here but these lashes, I love the way they are so much that I want to leave them alone. They're very wispy. Go ahead and look up. They're wispy on top, so if I add mascara, they'll look a little heavy. You're doing great. It's also weird to have somebody put mascara on you. Okay, perfect. Oh, gorgeous okay love it all right let's do lips and we're gonna do like a rose tone we're gonna do like a pinky color on her today so I am going to use um this color this is Charlotte Tilbury this is the lip cheat this is a great great color it's um a universal liner so it's just made to replicate the natural colors in your lips so it's really good to outline with and get the shape that you want and then apply your lipstick. And it's a pinky nude, so it has, depending on the person, it'll pull slightly pink, which I love for Tracy. It's gonna look really good with the shadows that we did. So for Tracy's blush, all we did was that, um, the blush from the Hourglass palette, like the glow is like a highlighter. So depending on how the lip looks, sometimes I'll add more blush. Gorgeous. Okay, I love the way that looks. I'm gonna pull my lipstick. And we're probably gonna do, I think I'm gonna do Cosmo on Tracy. Cosmo or Faux. We'll try Cosmo. If it's too warm, I'll make something else. So this is by MAC. So I'm going to pull a little bit of Cosmo and then a little bit of, it's called Faux. We'll see. Okay. So this is Cosmo. This is Faux. So Cosmo is like a warm um, sort of rosy color. And then um, Faux is more purpley pink. So I'm just going to kind of swatch them on her lips and see which one I like. See how it pulls on her. Oh, Cosmo's really pretty. Let's see faux though. Sometimes faux, yeah, faux looks like a little mauve on people sometimes. Cosmo's very flattering because it has that warmth to it. I'm going to mix them because I do kind of like the purpley tones. Yeah, that's really pretty. So I love, I love, love, love lip liners. I like to, they give shape to the lips. They help the lipstick last longer. And I really like the undertones they give, especially if you're using a more creamy lipstick, sometimes they're not fully opaque. And so you'll pick up a lot of the natural tones of their lips. But if you put on a lip liner first, you can really, really control the entire tone of the lips. You look good in pinks. So I don't know if you're a pink girl and you usually wear it, but I really like it. So you can't really talk back to me when I'm doing your lips. Okay, let's see, we have, oh, and then we're asking if the sound is good. Our sound was a little bit quiet um, yesterday, so let me know if you guys can hear us well. Um, oh, that's so nice. Uh, someone said, Julie is so talented. I'm a mature woman, so going to find this tutorial she has with doing her mom's makeup after this. Aw, yeah, my mom's a cutie. We did my mom like a couple weeks ago. And then Kathy says, you are very beautiful, Tracy. Okay. Go ahead and open slightly for me. I like to get the corners. 
I took a makeup class with this makeup artist years and years ago. This was when I first started. And she's like, do not ever let your client have like floating lips. You have to get these little corners or the lips just kind of look like they're floating. So I listen and I always do the corners. It looks better if you um, if you look at like beauty magazines and stuff and they have the editorials where they're really close up on the lips, they always like connect the corners and it's so perfect looking. All right. Are you a gloss girl? Do you like gloss? Yeah. Okay, me too. We're gonna do some gloss for you today. First I'm gonna wipe this off my hand so I don't make a mess. I love these MAC wipes. They just get everything off. Like it wipes completely clean because I'll put the makeup on my hand and on my little palette and they're super good. Okay, let's do... We're going to do um, Blushing Margarita. These are Buxom Glosses. I'm obsessed. If you've been watching my channel regularly, I think I do them on every single person. I have six shades, and I love them. They're super universal. They're a plumping gloss, but the, um, so they give a little bit of a plump to the lips. Almost just like a little bit of a buzz. Like, they don't get that tingly feeling. But they're really good. I love how creamy they are. Like, it's a creamy shine instead of like a, um, like a super wet shine. So it's really pretty. Okay, with that on, I want her to have a little more blush just so it pops. And so we're going to go back. I'm just going to use that same blush I used before. So this is the Hourglass. Where did I put it? It's the Hourglass palette, if I can find it. I'm very spread out today. Oh, it's right here. It was like in my hand. Okay. <laughs> um, so these two, one of them's a luminous blush and one of them is just an illuminating powder. It's more sheer, but it has a pink tone. So I just mix them. Hourglass is fantastic when you're doing anything glowy, especially if you're working on skin that can get oily. If you actually do your glow with powders, it's going to last all day as opposed to creams. Although I love a good cream blush, um, the powders will just last a lot longer. And you can get that same effect. You can get that very shiny look. And Hourglass is great for that because those theirs are more of a shimmer, like a finely milled sheen instead of glittery. Gorgeous. Okay. Before I show Tracy the makeup, um, let's do her, let's have producer Kelly show her before one more time. So her before video, before brows, um, foundation, and then everything we just did. And why she does that, I'll walk you through the brows really quick. Um, so we use the Anastasia Brow Wiz, the pencil. We did dark brown, so that's just a neutral brown. And then to pick up the tones in her hair that are red, I went over it with the Auburn Brow Powder. So they sell these individually. I have the Pro Palette, but this Auburn color is really similar to the tones in her hair. But I wanted it to have a, a dark brown base because her roots are dark brown, her, nat her natural brows are dark brown. So if you just went in with a red powder, they would look um they would look fake and kind of stand out but if you create a base and then go over it with the auburn powder it helps blend it so that's a good tip okay i'm going to check the comments so we have like a minute or two delay in the chat between when you guys write a comment and when i see it so a lot of times what happens is we'll sign off and then all your comments will come in so if you have any questions drop them now and i will check the chat before we sign off but we're going to show we're going to show tracy her makeup you ready yeah <laughs> okay Oh, that's so pretty. Aw, you're so <laughs> gorgeous, Tracy. Cute. Do you like the lashes? Yes. Do you like them? Yeah. They're pretty. Are you going to try them? Yeah. Are you going to save them and try them on your own? <laughs> awesome. Oh, you're so cute. Does she not look beautiful, guys? Tracy is gorgeous. Okay, let's check the chat. Yes, Marjorie says you look very beautiful. Um, let's see. People are replying to Robbie. Robbie says you look glamorous, but yet very soft if that makes sense. Yes, and that's what I love. This is kind of like my signature look. I love glam, I love glow, I love lashes, I love everything, but this is very wearable. <laughs> like, it's still good for day to day. Um, oh, and then um, people are envious of your eyes. <laughs> They're very beautiful, she has great eyes. Um, 
Yeah, Kathy says you look beautiful. She does. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. being my model, Tracy. You are fabulous, and you are going to kill it in cosmetology school. <laughs> You're going to be amazing. You're going to be a makeup artist. All right, guys, thank you also for joining us live or watching the replay. We will be live again tomorrow. No, it's Thursday. We live again on Monday. <laughs> See you then. Bye, guys. Thank you.